So Bernoulli's equation is P plus half rho V square plus rho G H is constant. Now let us look at something called the concept of efflux velocity. Let's say we have a container containing some fluid and a small orifice or a small opening in the end like this. We have a fluid like this. Let's say the cross-sectional area of the top part here is AS and the cross-sectional area of this small orifice is let's say AO. This contains a fluid of density rho. This height is say h. What we are interested to find is the velocity of the fluid which comes out of this orifice. Say that is Ve. For these kind of a, these kind of problems or problems which deal with a fluid and velocity of the fluid exiting some chamber, etc., what we need to do is apply basically two equations. One is the equation of continuity. Second is the Bernoulli's equation. To apply the equation of continuity, what we basically require is that the area plane should be perpendicular to the velocity vector, which is happening here. This is the plane of area, this is the velocity. This is the plane of area, the velocity would have been in this direction. To apply Bernoulli's equation, what we need is the two points across which we apply must be in the same fluid and must be along the same streamline. Assuming that these two points lie along the same streamline, we can always apply Bernoulli's equation across these two points, provided all the other assumptions which we took earlier are holding. So, the equation of continuity. This in this case will be AS times whatever velocity it has on the surface, Vs. This is going to be equal to Ao times the velocity of efflux. This is say our equation 1. Next we apply Bernoulli's equation. To apply this, we need the information of pressure, kinetic energy and potential energy here and the idea of kinetic energy, potential energy and pressure here. Note that this point is essentially lying just outside the orifice. When we say just outside, the point is almost present within the area but not within the bulk of the fluid here. So let's say if the fluid is coming out like this and this is the area and this is the duct or the small orifice, then we consider this point somewhere here. So applying Bernoulli's equation across these two points, we get as pressure energy density on the top part as the atmospheric pressure. the kinetic energy part half rho Vs square, the potential energy part as 
rho g. Now the height which we take here has to be with reference to some point. So let's say our origin lies somewhere along the line here, somewhere along this line. I mean these two lines, uh, the origin and this this point is basically connected by a line. So let's say our origin is somewhere here. Oh. So from origin, this is at this is at a height of h. So rho g h. This is now equal to these quantities at this orifice. So the pressure here is going to be P A T M again plus half rho V E square plus because it is at the original uh, at our reference plane, so the potential energy is going to be zero. Note that the pressure here was taken as P A T M and not P A T M plus rho gs. This is wrong. This is because of the fact that we are considering this point just outside the interface. Here, there is no fluid on top of it. The point is basically lying on the moving fluid. Thus, it will not experience any pressure due to a height of fluid h. What will what will this actually be facing with is the atmospheric pressure, which is just outside the orifice. So this is wrong. P A T M is the pressure which is acting here. This is our equation number two. When we solve these equations. We get V S as A zero by A S into V E. Substituting this value of V S in the Bernoulli's equation and cancelling of P A T M rho etc., we get A O. Let me write the equation first. That will help you to understand it better. So, cancelling of P A T M for the time being, we get half. Rho V S square plus Rho G H equals half Rho V E square. Now we cancel off this density part from both sides. Rearranging this a bit, we get V S square minus V E square. Or let me write it as v square minus v square. That will keep g h as positive. So v e square minus v s square is going to be two g h. Now we substitute v s as per this. So we have v e square minus a o by a s square. Into v e square, getting equal to two g h. Simplifying this, we get v e square as two g h divided by one minus a zero by a s whole square. So the efflux velocity v e. Is going to be under root two g h by one minus a o by a s whole square. This is going to be our efflux velocity. Now let us look at the efflux velocity properly. 